Hello and welcome, friends and enemies, to another edition of the R Street Fighter uh, RSF Radio. I almost did the intro for the for the uh, the tournament that we run because uh, currently I have on the line a very special guest, the head of Challenge, Matt McIntyre. How you doing? I'm doing great, Joe. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to touch base with you in these these strange to- strange times of the world right now, and thrilled oh, to yeah. have this have this time together. I'm in the tournament mode right now. I, I, I can't get off of it. Uh, it was just like I was ready to go like right into tournament mode. It was like it was kind of wild how that works. But uh, a little maybe I should do a little apology right up quick. I am sick. I don't have the corona. I am sick. Uh, <laughs> it's like this head cold where I might get nasally at some point. But I I I, I shot some nasal. I did some. I did a couple bumps before this, so I should be <laughs> should be good to record. Uh, but Matt, at the start of the show, whenever I have a new guest on, I like to give them space to pitch whatever they have going on right now. Uh, it could be anything. It could be you know, what projects you're working on or just anything in general that you think is cool or worth following. Um, but what do you got going on, man? Yeah. Um, so, you know, let's talk a little bit. I'll give you the challenge side of things first um, and, and maybe specific to the world we're talking about today. I think... You know, we got a couple of new features that are in development and rolling out here. And the, the biggest one that's available now is split participants. And mm-hmm. we, we use that term to basically, you know, help um, the double elimination brackets, right? Carry that loss into the final bracket. And now you can do that on challenge. And so you can actually start with losers and the with lose with participants in the losers bracket and then carry that on. And so that's that's probably the biggest development I'm able to share now, but a few more coming on the way. Mm-hmm. And then personally, man, I'm uh, stuck at home uh, like everybody and yeah. you know, working 10 feet for my kids. It doesn't always drive them that much productivity right now, but it does, you know, I get the occasional they'll run in with their switch question and ask me how to do something. So it adds a little more gaming to my day, which is a great thing, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, I can feel that because um, with the split bracket uh, in particular, how it used to be was that yeah. in uh two stage multi-stage tournaments it would dump out x number of players to another double elimination bracket but you had to manually be like okay this person has a loss send them to the loser's side if they were coming from like a loser's side of a bracket uh, right. but now that's not the case uh, that carries over so you it's just automatic now which is a nice feature if you're running a like super large like multi-pooled tournament which is yep. I mean, recommended it once you hit a certain size. I mean, we can personally, the way that we run tournaments is just like, fuck all. Here's a big old bracket uh, and run on through. But, you know, if you're if you've got like 64 entrants, doing something like this isn't that wild to do, especially if you have like the help to to T.O. something like that, uh, where you can assign like a T.O. per segment that just like cuts things off in a nice uh in a really ni- like neat, nice way, in that you know, it, it gives people something to focus on uh, before you head into like the final stage, and you might not even want to stream all that first stage stuff. It's uh, it's a good feature. Uh, let's just put it that way. That I think yeah. has been like a long time coming for challenge. But uh, yeah, I appreciate that. We, we've seen it done both ways, right? The big brackets or the kind of mm-hmm. pool play, right? That's carrying through, and I think giving that option is what we're all about, and what we want to ensure that TOs have a chance to. Choose the way they want to do it. Anything else on Challenge, maybe in the last like year or so, that you've implemented that people who might have been might have used your service a long time ago, and then a lot for whatever reason, a lot of tournament scene like majors adopted Smash GG. They've been away for it for a while. They don't really know what Challenge can offer. But what what else like has developed over the last year or so that you're yeah. particularly proud of? I appreciate that. I think um, because a lot has changed. Like, (laughs) like we used Challenge fucking six years ago, and or or even longer than that now. Uh, And then coming back to it now, it's a this is a wildly different service in a in a in a good way. Yeah, and I'll I'll, I can even zoom out a little bit for you. So we um, please do. So I'm 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 relatively new to Challenge, right? I joined the team uh, back in the summer of eighteen. Um, and then I got to go to my first Evo um, that fall, right? And so that that 
that at that time, so Challenge was owned by the company that makes XSplit, so Split Media Labs. Mm -hmm. And um, as part of that deal at Evo at that time, I was running a stage. So I was running a side stage with another Split Media Labs employee that was running production and, and really got you know, such a better understanding of what that takes. And it's, it's not easy. Right. Right. Um, especially whatever comes up on that side stage or whoever's bringing whatever gear that has to hook up uh, to the stream was always a fun project. Um, and so during that time, we, you know, we've taken a hard look at challenge and, and, and really where we sit, right. And we're software, right. We're, we're software to help tournament organizers, small team. Uh, and we're pretty proud of this, but in, um, and we loved our times with Split Media Labs, great company, but we actually in November of 18 were acquired by Logitech. And so at that time, we had a chance to sort of work with them and develop kind of our new roadmap and really where we wanted to be and where we see ourselves in you know, helping people organize tournaments. And I think the biggest thing we went back and looked at was, you know, communities, right? FGC is a great example. And when you build a community and you host regular competitions, you need a place to house those competitions mm -hmm. and a place that people can come back to. They know where the hub is, right? Just a hub for competitive activity. And that's that's really where we develop challenge communities. And so you guys use it. I know it. Uh, in fact, it's one of my one of the ones I point to usually when I'm explaining it to people because uh, how how well you've adopted it. And I, mean, I do have some questions for you on that stuff too. Maybe that's offline stuff too, but um, yeah, feel free, feel free to feel free to yeah. flop this interview at, at any time. Right. <laughs> Anytime uh, you want to switch over, let's I'm, I'm, I would be happy to answer any questions. Just go back and forth. But yeah, so we built that um, as really that place, because I think when it comes down to it, whether you're a participant in a tournament or you're the organizer mm -hmm. after the competition, you, there's one big question you ask yourself and, and it is, was that rewarding, right? And it, rewarding is a subjective thing, but the idea is if you're a participant in the rewarding nature, you're probably looking at, hey, did I skill up? Did I meet some people? Did I get to socialize? You know, did I did I develop a rival? You know, is there somebody I'm gonna play against next time? Right. Um, what was it rewarding for me? And on the TO side, you're saying, hey, was it rewarding? It's probably, hey, was it monetarily rewarding? Did you help, you know, proliferate proliferate the game that you're excited about? Did you gain some new followers? Did you build a brand? You know, what is it for you? And so we realized that that's hard to do, right? It's hard to sort of make that easier. And so that's why we built communities. It's sort of a way to, to house some of that hub, develop the statistics. And there's a lot, we got a lot of work to do. You know, we're not done yet. And I think that's, that's probably the biggest thing I want to convey is that challenge is is not going anywhere and it's 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 a decade old now and it's certainly um we got a lot more to do and, and that's the exciting things up ahead yeah uh that's something that is that we've actually utilized in the way that we run our tournaments because it makes seeding really easy or at least easier uh in that we can see the match history of of everyone who has competed in the last x amount of tournaments that we've run for a particular game uh and uh, shout outs to the people who, uh, like Sniffles, who the dude who uh, collects all that data and like right. he has a, the whole fucking spreadsheet uh, <laughs> that he uses to, to do that stuff that he basically inputs manually. Uh, I think maybe he should, hmm, maybe there's a way that he could pull the API now that I'm like thinking about it. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> other I, than that. Yeah, we're going to have to, that's the next meeting. We got to <laughs> chat with him and figure out what we can do. Yeah, actually. After after I hang up this this call, I'm going to forward you his uh, his contact information to see uh, if we can make that easier. Anyway, uh, a little, a little uh, mental note of that. I'll totally right. forget before the end of this episode. Um, but no, it it it's something that it, it is a very like it is something to show for of like here are the stats. Like here's here's what your community has done. Here's like the players in the community like and, and keeping track of all that is i don't know people care about that stuff specifically yeah. in the fgc i don't know if this is this might not be fgc specific but right. man people love fucking stats man stats are like people love the numbers they want framed if people want frame data they're gonna look at these stats okay it's right. it's some interesting stuff um but is that the 
What about uh, the other implementation that happened in the last couple of years that I've noticed is you do have now, uh, it, you can mark it as a paid tournament. Uh, and mm-hmm. what exactly, how does that work? We haven't run a paid tournament on Challenge. We haven't done it yet. Yeah. Uh, maybe explain that process for people who are thinking about that. Yeah. And one, one thing I just want to go back to quickly. Sure, sure, sure. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting it. I'm getting no, it out of myself. So please. I love please. it. No, we can, I feel like we could talk all night, but I think the, you mentioned just some new things that are happening. I think a quick resource for people to go to is now you'll see on the challenge page in the footer, um, you can actually review all of our features now. So what we did, I think challenge is, is so feature rich that a lot of these things sometimes get lost, especially mm-hmm. if you haven't been back in a while. Mm-hmm. So if you get a chance, the footer of challenge.com, you click into the pricing page and then at the bottom of that page, there's another button that says view all challenge features. And then you can really get a sense of everything that's available um, across communities and tournaments themselves and the API itself and everything that you that might, people might have interest in. So um, so that's just an update there just to give people a sense of where they can go to get caught up. And then, yeah, you, were t- you, you just mentioned sort of a feature that has escaped me already. Which one did you want to dive into? Uh, the, the having paid tournaments now. Of like yeah. you, check, you, you check that that box of paid tournament. Uh, how's that handled on Challenge's end? Yep, perfect. So two ways. One, um, so we require you to link up your own Stripe account. So that's uh, that's how the payment is managed today. Um, I will share that PayPal is incoming, so we're working through that. Um, nice. I feel like that's going to be that's clutch because so yeah. many people just have PayPal; they don't want to have any other service. That's that is choice. So thank you for doing that and getting that yeah. out of the way. You got it. And and the way we have to do PayPal, it's a little unique. So the way we do Stripe today is that you set your tickets. We do have if you're a free user of Challenge, a standard user, we say is that there is a 75 cents per order charge that, that we take as part of that management. Um, but all the rest goes directly to you. So if you're doing payouts or anything, that's kind of all on your side. We're not managing that. Okay. Um, if you're a premier user of Challenge, there is no fee. And that's likely where the PayPal is going to sit. And it's mostly because PayPal doesn't allow distributed payments. Um, to the best of my knowledge, what I understand is that, you know, when, when you... Stripe allows saying, hey, send 75 cents to Challenge and send the rest to the, the Stripe owner, right? Mm-hmm. Um, whereas PayPal doesn't allow those to be split at this time. So we, so PayPal, there'll be no fee, but it'll be something that'll be on that premier tier. Okay. that I think that makes sense. Uh, if you're offloading all of the, like the payment liabilities to the payment services instead of Challenge itself, which is probably the smart thing to do from a business end, especially if you're a small team. Uh, that makes sense. That's it. And so so with a paid tournament, you're basically setting your fee, you're setting you know, the max number of participants, you're linking Stripe, soon to be PayPal to that, uh, to that payment, and you're turning it on. Now that's possible on the individual tournament level, and it's also possible with challenge events. So we use the word event to, to basically designate a multi-tournament competition, right? So you might, uh, usually an IRL, IRL event, right? Where, hey, you can participate in anything from Street Fighter, Tech and whatever. And you're you're buying a ticket essentially to the event and then you're registering per tournament after that. So you can also set up paid events just like you can set up paid individual tournaments. Um, and either of those can be managed that way. Cool. And then the only, the only other one thing on the event side is you can also line up merch and sell that through there. I mean, it's fulfilled by you, but all the payments could come directly through Stripe or PayPal, whichever one you set up. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's good to know. That is sim- that is similar to how Matrino does their fulfillments of it. It forwards that information, that order information to whoever owns whatever product is being sold and then fulfillment happens on the other end on the other end you got, it. Uh, you got it cool 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 that that makes sense to me as someone who has been on that side but it might not be obvious to people who are just trying to get into that right uh, to, to which i'll also say uh bec- for other people who are running tournaments that because uh payouts are on the the organizer and you are then liable for payouts. So like that is something you have to be like cognizant of uh, when it comes to like receiving money and then being quick about 
doling out that money to winners or whoever whoever needs that whoever needs to get paid let's say yeah uh, makes a lot of sense um just want to like bring that out for anyone who's listening to the no, show who's never yeah, like, we, run an event because there's, there's a lot of people listening to the show maybe never run an event or haven't thought about things that uh it would take to run an event but that is something that is highly important especially in the the fgc and esports in general where payouts don't happen like typically they don't happen right away and it's right. it's sometimes rare but it's you know it's it kind of makes sense if like there's big like big corporate money because then it has to pass through hands checks need to be signed all that shit uh, yeah. but the small on the smaller end like a, a local TO it's very easy to receive payout and have that just be one and done like the same night is something you could do you got it that's exactly uh, right uh, any other uh, features that have come along in the last? Cause, I mean, because honestly, I learned about the the new features thing today, where you can go down and click that, uh, see what's new. Uh, yeah. And anything else going on that like you might like your team is particularly proud of? Um, let's see. I mean, there's a lot. Um, one of the big things, stations. Actually, this will help all the tos that are doing, you know, locals and in persons when we get back there. But stations is. Yeah. Um, a feature in challenge that allows you to basically label all your setups, right? So let's say A, B, C, D, you create those as stations in challenge. And there's a new feature called a station queue, which basically could be put up on a projector or TV or monitor or whatever. And it's going to prompt everybody for who's playing next and where they're playing. So, you know, no more losing your voice over a microphone, trying to scream for players to get there. Yeah. Uh, it can be really mm -hmm. self-managed. Um, with a lot with, by just turning on the station queue, making it visible. And again, it's just kind of cycle through matches and tell them where they need to play and sit down at. Yeah, that is, so that is huge. I went to, gosh, how many years ago was this? I went to a local in Houston, Texas years ago. Okay. Uh, I couldn't even tell you the name of the town. It was like outside of Houston, right? Uh, and they had pulled information off of, they were using smash uh, they had pulled information off and basically set it up like jury rigged it so that they had a big like monitor, a huge like flat screen TV in like the center of their of their room that had the entire bracket on it. And at any time that there was like, we need this person on stream, it would show up and you could just look at it. You didn't have to go and and ask whoever was running the bracket. This is like right. huge. This was like huge for a small team, <laughs> right? like a small yeah. local, right? And this was like the first time I've ever seen anything like that. I was like, oh shit, this one <laughs> looks complicated. And like two, like this is so awesome for your community. But from what you're saying right now is that if someone were to want to do that at their local, uh, using Chalange, it would probably be pretty easy to set up a monitor that just has that page up uh, in like a big fucking bracket being like, here you go. Like, don't come to, don't go to Sarah to see who's on next. Uh, don't bother Sarah. She's not right. here to hit manage your shit. Look right. at this thing. Don't bother We're Sarah, please. Yeah, go manage where you need to be when you need to be there. Yeah, that's no, that's, that's fucking rad. Um, and and I'll share too that the stations can carry a Twitch stream or any stream URL, so they become clickable in the bracket to the stream. Um, um, so you can actually okay. just link people right out to it. If you got multiple streams going, you could have a stream assigned to each station. It's going to pop that up because I think we all love would love to see more contextual parts of a stream. It's like, well, where, what part of the bracket am I looking at right now? Who is this playing? And yeah. how we help them forward? So we're we're getting there. Um, that's that, on the horizon. That's well. fucking rad, actually. That's something that I had wanted for a really long time, uh, kind of to go through the history of what our Street Fighter did. Uh, we used a service called Battlefy at one point, yeah, which had they were like they were always promising that of if you are if the people who are streaming if they're up and running like it'll have like here's like the link and it'll even just like show a page that has their like their stream oh wait was it Battlefire? was it you know what it's another bracket service that has since folded uh <laughs> so yeah. for me maybe i won't talk poorly on them but they had this vision of like okay. Good. A, a board where you could like click on links of people who were like streaming their like the sets right and to me as someone who for i run an online tournament uh there are parts of the bracket that 
I can't stream all the time because it, it's not feasible. Right. Uh, but like it would go to a page and it would be like, here's all the streams that are that are in this particular section of the bracket and like my my vision of dreams was like oh man that would be incredible if you could have that but then they were ended up being a trash company as as many <laughs> like early esports like oh. maybe not even like early esports uh companies but like you ever like have a team that's like we just got all this venture capital man we can we're gonna, in, we're gonna investing in <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do it big time man we're big into into the esports right now and it's like <laughs> mm. they they just they didn't have the legs man but yeah uh, so it seemed it sounds like Challenge has a a thing that works similar to that uh, yeah, maybe not like similar. the whole big board but at least shows where people can find streams let's say. You got it. And that's it. It's kind of a step towards that. And I, and the stations can also be used. And we've done this with some partners where uh, you can also put in private match details in those station queues. So like a server, mm -hmm. IP plus password. You know, we've seen that for CSGO a lot where only the two players in the match know the details of the, the private match details, basically where to find each other online. And, you know, that's... and. I, I think that's where we're going, right? I mean, the idea of helping equip more virtual tournaments like you guys are doing and turning right. that on is something that's uh, is certainly certainly important right now if at any time. Definitely. Uh, I think that, that that doesn't necessarily cross over with the fighting game community because of the way that netcode for online fighting games is kind of across the board fucking right. all over the place like it's <laughs> right. it's it's nonsense uh, man there hmm. let me kind of ask you this side question here's a curveball sure. <laughs> not, not written down in any way uh but with fighting games in particular yeah is it have you heard anyone come to you with like I this is like impossible to run a fighting game tournament from because of the way that my game is set up like, or have you seen, or have you like picked up netcode for a certain game and been like, oh man, tournaments would be like on, specifically online tournaments would be very difficult with, with this kind of online setup. Yeah. I mean, I think the nature is, uh, I, I mean, you're, you're always going to run into the, and something online, right? And it, there, there's, there's a lot of variables, right? We all deal with them. We're all dancing around them. Mm -hmm. Um, but if if the intention if the intentionality I think at a really high level if the intentionality is there and everybody's aware of that you know what what difference does it make right it's it's still it's still a good time you're all under the same restrictions is that something you're okay with I think that's kind of where you start and really where you guys have been able to thrive for mm -hmm. us you know we've you know we've done we did Evo Japan 2019. Um, We've done online events. We've seen it all, and you know we're not organizers ourselves, right? Challenge is not is not organizing self organizing tournaments um, at this time, and so we we want to encourage whatever the way people want to organize tournaments, and if that's online, you just got to make sure everybody's comfortable with that. Because I think uh, you tell me. I mean, are people complaining to you, or, or do you hear it? I guess that's what I want to ask you. <laughs> I mean, just like one thing that that like specifically stands out in my mind of like. Uh, an online service that was unstreamable was actually Street Fighter V at launch. People might not yeah. remember this, but that game had battle lounge lobbies that were only two people. You could only have two people for whatever reason. Uh, and if you've ever streamed a online tournament, when you're not in a location with the any of the other players, it's lit it's literally impossible. You can't do it. You can't because you can't view the match as it's happening, uh, wherever it's happening. Uh, it was it was impossible. But there was we still ran we still ran brackets. We just didn't have streams at that. There was like a I want to say like a couple weeks there where it was like mm, this is was it only this, two weeks? I thought it was longer than that. I mean. Nah, um, it was probably more than that. It was okay. probably like two months, actually. I, I've, right. Listen, man, I have no fucking idea how time works anymore. <laughs> like right, the last it. three months has been a whole fucking year, as far as I'm concerned. This oh, is, I, yeah, we can all agree to that. <laughs> yeah, all like the, the the fucking nightmare that 2019 was never did not end in 2020, folks. Uh oh, it just no. went global. Um, but I mean, that's kind of 
I mean, as dour as it is for a reason as like why it is important for us to have this conversation right now is because yeah. there are there are many communities that have reached out to say we we need to transition our live event to an online event and yep. how how do we even do that um actually recently i, I pulled this one out uh a couple mm, now I'm trying to think. Was it earlier today or was it yesterday? It was yesterday. Because <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I cannot tell you how time works, uh, especially with like the, the rate of which change happened in like my personal job. Anyway, uh, but yesterday uh, someone had just asked like, I, maybe not some, there were a couple of people who had come to me asking, well, how do you run how do you do X in for an online tournament? You know, it was like, you know what, let me just do a, a big long write up that covers like all of the very basic steps. It doesn't go into specifics of like what buttons do you click and like, how do you go from, from a to B to C it, mm -hmm. it it'll just say, here's what this should look like at, at an end product and kind of like leads people to what they should do. And, and like have it like it was great to see so many people have respond positively to that and say, oh, man, I had never thought about doing X, Y, Z because it's like online tournaments were kind of rare in the FGC because netcode historically is um, kind of trash for for most games on the market. A um, couple yeah. games notwithstanding, like Skull, you have your Skullgirls, you have your your KIs, but it's not all it's not all. Uh, not all roses out there in the in the net code world, but uh, other than that, that's that's kind of it, it's just interesting to see how people have transition or are transitioning to online tournaments. Are are you guys thinking about that in in your team as to what that might yeah. be for you? Yeah, I mean we're thinking about it all the time. I mean challenge is. I mean our whole team's home right now, right? We're all mm -hmm. protecting ourselves, trying to stay healthy, whatever we got to do, and I think. Um, I think you see some of the FGC events that are even so we're most of our team is based in Manila in the Philippines um, and just two of us myself and David Corn Cornelius the founder of Challenge uh, are based in Indianapolis so we're in the Midwest and I think you know you see like uh, combo breakers coming up right you think about is that going to happen are there's other ones that are they going to happen and, and I think those questions are what we all are asking ourselves and if they if they don't what's the next step how can you maintain um, you know, some of those bigger events and obviously CEO Dreamland, we just kind of saw that one. And so you wonder where it goes and if, if, if the community is ready for it, I think the community is, is so strong that uh, I think they'll weather anything. Uh, but how do you keep them playing right in this, in the meantime? Um, right. And how do we keep them going? And so, yeah, I think online is an alternative, right? It's uh, just like we said, it's not going to meet, check everybody's box, but it is, it is a possibility uh, we think we're a good solution for that. I think there's there's other solutions out there. And, you know, I think the biggest thing I, I was going to ask you around just kind of, you know, those that are coming to you, are they coming with sort of dire need to keep momentum alive? Is it keep their business as a TO alive? Or is it more, hey, we just, we're just trying to keep everybody together and keep them playing? I'm curious it's, which one. It is a little bit of both of which – Whenever people come to me on that side of like, how do I keep the, the business going? How do I keep people happy that are trying to continue to get paid here? Uh, that's a lot more difficult when it comes to online tournaments because of the type of experience that an online tournament is and all of yeah. the extra steps that that you're asking players to do and using free services it, mm -hmm. it it is hard to try and pull a like a cover charge for an online tournament when all of that money isn't directly going to the players and there's maybe someone else uh taking a little little cream off the top to, to keep things going maybe you have a community that's okay with that and like has the, the open pockets for it i know that the fgc is pretty cheap just in general <laughs> Like, or like, I've seen a lot. Like, you see over the years, so many people complain about all of the the things that they're getting nickel and dimed for, and it's just like sure. uh, that things cost money. But uh, yeah, and, and as a TO, right, it's that same level of back to what I mentioned earlier about being rewarding. Yeah, you know, you want you want your experience, whether you're hosting it online or in person. At the end of it, it's got to be fulfilling enough in a way that you want to do it again, and 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 whether right or wrong or indifferent, 
money's ha- like should be a part of that somewhere. Like it just should be because yeah. it just keeps it thriving. That's the part that really I feel like the community is hurting for right now because we've seen to kind of go to the the negative edge of it the the darker side let's say is the for the events that have had to cancel and are being very open and clear about hey we the return policy we can't like we can't afford to refund x amount or like we can't or like we'll have to extend this period because we we need the money to keep going in 2021 like the future for them like the the margins on these events are fucking razor thin to the point where if an event doesn't happen and there are a lot of returns on on entry fees and or they don't make any of the money that they planned on making through merch sales or any other way that people would spend money at their event then like they also like lose a lot of money right for not like if they're well i feel like i should like talk about the legal side of things where like if if the government doesn't step in and say we are forcing you to close your event then there's no right. like there's no liability like there's there's no pay, like insurance for these organizers to get paid on the back end because of a like what would otherwise be declared as like a um uh a fucking what's the word I'm looking for? A something from God. A uh, does it? Well, what, oh, an act of God. There we go. Uh, like right. I still use that in official language. Anyway, uh, but to, to effectively mean like something like this widespread virus, which has caused places to you know force people not to be in the same place. Uh, so if the government doesn't step in and say you have to cancel your event, then they're not on the line like their insurance companies aren't on the line for that they don't get paid back any of that so it's it just it's i can understand the the need for someone to say hey like we need a little bit to keep this going if you're part of this community like please consider uh if you want to see this event in 2021 and to see uh, i've which really sucks i've seen a lot of people respond hyper negative to that and just be like, oh, you're just penny pinch, like you just want our money, like you're you're swindling us out of money. And it's like, if they were trying to swindle you, they would have tried to do it a long time ago, and they would have been laughed out of the community years ago. Like, yeah. like so many people have before. Like, people have tried to do that, and they're not part of the community anymore. Uh, to the point where, like, these these are organizers that we can trust to. Right, like at least run an event that might not be able to next year if they if they don't make ends meet, I suppose. So, it, right. I can understand the the need to say if you were running an online event, say we need X amount to or like here's like a charity tournament, right? Of like maybe not charity tournament because you'll have like a payout. You, you'd have to pay out the the winners at some point if you're asking for a buy in, at least in some degree. Yeah. Uh, to then I think you're right. and maybe fund an event. Maybe that's something that players could or organizers could try to do to to kind of help ends meet in the, in the meantime for however long this this lasts. I don't. People are saying that it could could kind of work its way out if things go well in like mid April. But like I'm kind of thinking that things probably won't be that way, and it will be a couple months. <laughs> like it's. Ooh. That's you tell me uh, I gotta stay home with my kids for a couple months. I mean, geez. Uh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, uh, unless you're like a, yeah. Never mind. I was just gonna make a like a guy from. That was a very like '90s dad joke of like, ah, I hate my wife. Ha ha ha! Isn't that funny? And it's like, uh, mm, I don't, I don't know if that flies Man, uh, anymore. Yeah. And uh, that's a tough situation if you're in one of those right now. Um, I hate my kids. Isn't that ain't that just the jokes? Uh, mm, all right, Dad. Um, <laughs> right, take it um, easy. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. To to kind of like wrap that thought around is like it is hard to suggest ways for organizers to run money with like taking the, without giving all of that money back to the community in some way. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm gonna. I mean. I'm, stand up here a little bit for organizers too. I think they, 
it, it takes a lot of time, you know, and these events, you know, they're developing okay. skills, you're developing friendships, it's entertainment, there's, it's a compounding, amazing thing that's happening. And, you know, maybe the prices just need to go up a little bit, maybe we need to realize that, hey, this is, you know, this, this is more substantial of an investment that I'm participating in. And, I, you know, it may impact the shape and form that some of the, the bigger events take. Um, or it may create an opportunity where more local events are happening because people are taking it upon themselves without the travel and the large expenditures. I, I don't know. I just think it's, um, you know, we want to help. I want to help, right? It's something that I think we talked earlier about sort of challenge communities and what that product is, but it's really, I mean, if you think about the first FGC community and so the players I've talked to, it's like, you know, what arcade did you start learning at? Who brought you in, right? Who was the, who was your teacher? Um, how did you get started? And I think that's what it's always been. And um, so how do you yeah. maintain it and also make the dollars and cents work out of it as well? That, that is such a huge reason as to why people stick around. And a lot of mistakes that organizers make, people who try to run online events, one of the biggest mistakes that I see them make is to try to run an event with their event being the showcase or like, here's our, like our stream is the showcase or like that's what they're really focusing on is pe like bringing people into what they have versus how it, they need to like flip that around, right? Of make it look at the players who show up. Like let's highlight this, like mm -hmm. let's make it as easy as possible for people to get in and communicate with each other. I don't care if they talk to me, like I'm, I'm just building this, this FGC house of cards. Yeah. yeah. There's just this platform that you can go like, that's really what you need to focus on. And that's how you keep people coming back. Because even if you offer prize money, even if you pull out a pocket to say there's a hundred dollars on this tournament, that is at some point, the return on investment there levels out because the players who keep showing up week after week will notice, Oh, this person or these three people keep winning and I don't really have a shot. And the people who keep winning aren't, like running matches with me afterwards or they're just bouncing uh, and I have no way to really get to them or talk mm -hmm. with them or, you know, they won't, I have no access to them. Then that person's going to disappear. And then your like the big pyramid that you could be building turns into the tip of the pyramid. And I know I kind of just made an Illuminati reference, but like that kind of <laughs> is how it, how it turns out, right? Like you're only up there in that, if that's what you're trying to focus on or like, or if that's, that's just where the cutoff is if you were trying to invest that way, but invest in your players, make sure that they are, they're happy coming back to your tournament. Like make sure that they have a way to communicate, which kind of leads me into my next question for you is yeah. is there currently or any plans in the future any way to have let me kind of reel this back a little bit because sure. i have to i have to frame this whole question of the thing that i really like about challenge from a a user end if i were to enter a tournament is that there's really only one page that i need to look at it has all the information it has like the rules it has like the other players it has where i'm at in the break like just has everything on it like i just go mm -hmm. to the page and if the way if that's the way the tournament is set up you go to that bracket page you're there it has everything uh is there a way or any thoughts for the future to include any kind of chat service or have like discord integration into challenge uh, yes. So I can, a couple things. Uh, oh, shit. Okay, there. cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you're, you're speaking the right way. Like we believe that the communication around most games is happening on discord anyway, and we don't need to necessarily redo that. Right. But there is, right. there is, um, so natively in challenge, there's, there's a discussion tab that does exist on you know from that bracket page like if you left it today and what that's more of a forum -y type post right which so i'll can... i'll be honest with you even though people have tried to contact me through that way whenever tournaments are going i i forget about it that's not something uh, i that is something yeah. that i find out after the tournament and i go oh shit x player was trying to reach me i hope that was managed at some point uh yep. just the way that that's the way that i manage the way that we 
we run our tournaments is something that is usually an afterthought. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's good. Your, serv- that's good. your service sucks ass. Make it <laughs> better. The worst. The worst. <laughs> um, we no, we know that dic- discussion thing needs, a, needs an update, or or right. we need to kind of really adopt it. So what we did. Um, and as a community, a challenge community user, you can enable our Discord bot. So we've got one. Um, it's under settings in the community, and it will publish a plethora of information, including uh, you know match results, uh, match notifications to the players if they're lo- if they sync it up their D- Discords or not. Um, it'll it'll ping for check-ins. It'll ping for. Um, there's several different things. We got a knowledge base article. I can we can link to it maybe in the oh, show notes or something. Too. I actually didn't know this was a thing that existed that I am a hundred percent going to use going forward. And probably like the fuck, why haven't I taken advantage? How long has this existed? Uh not that long, so don't feel too bad. Okay, uh, okay. Only, all right. only about two years. No, I'm just kidding, man. That's uh, <laughs> Uh, I was like, oh, fuck, I just got blew up, man. That's, that's true. Because that's, that's stuff that we've made on our own through, like, our own bots that we currently do manually that right. that we're trying to do. But if that could be automatic, then that is, that would be choice. Yep. Good. So, interested in your feedback. Once you get it fired up, let me know. Um, yeah, we're figuring out how do you keep that communication a uh, how do we support the communication where it's happening, the real time chat where it's happening today and not right. necessarily take people away. So that's why we went the bot route as opposed to, um, you know, again, trying to build our own chat engine or system. It's just, that's not what challenge is. Challenge is a place to compete and, you know, and that's it. So it's a platform for managing and hosting competitions. And that's what we want to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of the other way, the other thing I wanted to talk about there because it's the place you go to compete is the thing again I'll restate that I like about it is that everything is on that one page you load up that one page you are one click away from reporting any match in yep. it and it is fast unlike some other services smash gg uh, cuz here's mm, all right soapbox time uh smash gg is a it is a great tool it has so many features it is feature rich and i can understand from any organizer's perspective that it has like protections for you as the organizer uh it can it has all of these different ways that you can cut up a bracket uh you can yep it has all this shit right it's this huge swiss army knife that is from a user end fucking unusable (laughs) It it is trash from a user end the ui is just terrible and again this is me joe monday talking and not anyone from challenge talking i'm not paid by challenge to say this uh matt certainly probably doesn't want that (laughs) going you know you want to keep good blood between competition maybe but i say fuck them (laughs) it is because think about it i can't tell you the amount of times that i've been at an event looking at the mobile smash gg being like oh man like this how many clicks do i need to where do i need to click okay i've clicked here uh and then like 10 seconds later okay that loaded oh fuck that was the wrong thing back all right two Uh more seconds all right let me just uh okay this was it uh okay now i'm behind another click and it takes it it takes crucial time that especially if you are thinking about running an online tournament and thinking that players are using a pc service where they can't they'll probably have their phone up to check the bracket having any kind of to communication between that player and what they need to look at and what they need to express to a to and then for that to to go in and check and correct and then for them to double check and say yes to thank you for doing this is like crucial seconds that like because you're not face to face with someone there's like typing involved there's like several people are typing like it is It is uh, such crucial time that can be wasted on this service that is just for whatever reason smash on mobile is just it is so bad i can't it is such a bad experience i have not heard a single person who's been like i open my phone smash gg and that shit ruins smooth like butter that's nobody that's fucking nobody and also you're not guaranteed to have good internet at a, at a site and the bigger your event the worse the internet is because that's just how the internet works uh but all right all right oh, okay let me calm down let me calm down 
because everything is on Chalon. It's right on that page. Users can click on the things. If they want to report a match, uh, if it's not reported correctly, they can just say, hey, not not correct. Uh, right. And if you have a challenge bot, it probably sh shows up in the in the Discord of like, hey, this match was... Oh, man, that's fucking rad. Ah, oh, dang, that's cool. Um, okay, so, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's, that would be... Yeah, that's clutch, actually. Fuck yeah. Um, yeah, good. Damn, Fire it up. I'm excited to get your feedback on it. All right, sorry. Uh, yeah, I have to get that running. Um, I'll I'll cool off for a minute. Uh, what else? <laughs> what no, else? What good. else do you I, have? <laughs> yeah, I, I need you to pick up the slack here because I'm I'm heat, I'm hot <laughs> under the collar right now. No, I'm we're good. Throw, I think <laughs> I want to throw punches. Yeah. yeah, I think you know I I'd be as a organ as a platform that's again helping people organize and manage competitions. It, we would be wrong to say we don't like competition. So competition is good, right? It's healthy for our industry. It gives you're right, organizers that need different features, that accessibility or those options. And that's helping push the whole industry forward so we can all come up with something great. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've always stood with the approach that, you know, we want we want to help make tournaments, help encourage tournaments to kind of run themselves, right? Help a TO do the relationship building, do the diving into the other areas that where the administration it becomes as stress-free as possible, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, make score reporting easier, station management, don't lose your voice at an event, these types of things, you know, all compounding. And I think we've always kind of had that and, and certainly had that at the at the grassroots levels and, and have always appreciated that. And, you know, Challenge is fortunate to have a 10-year history that started with, you know, StarCraft back in the day. I mean, that was kind of the original group that gravitated to it um hmm. closely followed by fgc i mean those were the two and it was yeah. um it's been a fun it's been an awesome ride it's been an awesome journey and, and we're not done we got a ton more to go and a ton more things to add so feedback's always good and i want to welcome that from anybody listening you know we're uh we're on our active help desk that you know anything that's as regarding uh features we got a whole list of those or a specific need or partnerships i mean those are all there so definitely don't hesitate to reach out to us if we can help uh, and I think it's worth noting something that you've kind of brought up a couple times, and I'm going to ask you for the specific link to this. Uh, yeah. Oh wait, you already did uh, the the like tutorial videos and how to like use the features is something that you guys do. Yeah, so full features um, for everything on Challenge is just challenge.com/slash/features/slash/tournaments, um, and then you'll see each categorized. You can see everything there, um, and then we also have our YouTube channel. Uh, which I guess we could put in the show notes or whatever's necessary, but youtube.com slash challenge. It's all there as well. Um, and, and we can go through it as well. So yeah, no, I'll, I'll that, make sure you got it. Yeah. That's just something that like, I feel like any time that I've come to a new service, I appreciate when people are like, here's the, <laughs> Just, just control Z, my dude. Uh, but but uh, there's, we're joking about something that only Matt and I can see inside jokes behind the behind the mic. Uh, yeah. But no, uh, there's. It, it is always useful to have like a video explained to me. Uh, here's how to do this step. Here's how to invite moderators to your channel. Here's how to, like, yep. do like here's how to use X Y Z feature, and having that. X, just having that basic explainer is super useful. Also, I'll say it for an organizer perspective, uh, is if you have specific rules for your tournament, consider cutting a very short video of like, here's how you sign up, uh, here's where you would go, just to explain to people what they need to be doing. You know, it's it's something that honestly I need to. I've done in the past and now need to probably cut again uh, for new is the we're probably going to get a lot more entrance as as time goes on here sure uh, like we had i mean this past week there was a ton of new players and things went really smooth because there's Good. well one our community is already there's already so many people who know what is going on that they're all super helpful and it's just a it's a positive scene which like kind of brings me back to if you are trying to run an event and continue an event and have people continue interest in your event, uh, it is good to you know, make sure the people that are helping out are 
you give them a little bit of props, you know, because that's, they don't need to do that. And also if someone's being the other end of it, someone's being explicitly like toxic to your community or being like hyper negative about everything, uh, it is something that can shove users out. So even if they might be a good player, uh, you might even be friends with this person. Uh, they'll probably end up turning more people away than you would otherwise be able to bring in. Cause it's not like the, something that I've learned is that, uh, just as moderator over time is that, uh, when there are people being loud, it's not because other people are quiet it's that the people who are being quiet don't see any space for them to enter or any reason for them to enter a conversation. If someone yeah. is being like explicitly like quote unquote loud in a chat, um, you know what I mean? But like, that's as something yeah. that to be but, cognizant of if for anyone out there who's like running a chat, there was a whole discord episode that was uh, two weeks ago. So go listen to that. We probably talk about some shit like that. Got um, it. And uh, let me add on to that. Cause I think, you know, especially this time of, uh, you know, c confinement or whatever else, I think a lot of people are going to be looking for new communities to be a part of, mm -hmm. and, you know, new terms to join new games to start playing. And so I'd encourage, you know, those out there in the FGC world that, you know, maybe be that mentor to somebody anew or give a chance, give a shout out, give a chance for somebody to learn something from you. Um, Cause I think a lot of people are gonna be looking for it. And I think that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's the big opportunity for all of us right now in, in gaming. Speaking of which a uh, feature idea for you. Yeah. Uh, this was something that Battlefy did that I thought was so good and so important. Uh, specifically to running an online event, but it would be useful for any kind of event uh, because as an organizer, if anyone out there who's ever organized event, an event, you know, you just have to assume that no one's read the rules. You just have to assume that. And mm -hmm. it made me mad for a really, really long time, longer than I like to admit, before I've just accepted that as fact. And it's just kind of like an ongoing joke where if someone comes to me as like, well, how do I change my name? It's like, it's written in the rules. But I'll, like I like have a good like haha it's written in the rules you idiot to myself but I don't call them that I just I link them to so like it's right here like here's the right. explainer like you be nice to him but in the inside I'm laughing at your fucking face you idiot uh, <laughs> you should have read the rules you dingus uh, which I, I always joke about which brings me back to my other favorite long running joke is that one of these days I'm going to write in the rules. If you read this rule and do X in the chat, I will without question, give you $20 immediately upon, upon like, verification that you have read the rules. Here is your $20. It's going to happen someday. It will happen. This is not actually a joke. This will happen at some point. <laughs> I just need to find the right week to do it. Um, but something that uh, back to my initial point, there's a lot sure. of a lot of avenues to talk about here. Uh, yeah, is that what Battlefy did was that when players signed up for a tournament, it was an option for the organizer to have a like, do, like here are the rules that you agree to page, and mm. that might be like useful for people who are like doing like legal stuff. But you could do another page that's just like. Here are the specific things. By clicking this box, you are saying that you have read these rules and you will adhere to them. And if you don't, we can auto DQ you, which made it super easy for us to be like, oh, your names don't match. No one found you for 30 minutes because X, Y, Z, you didn't follow the rules. It was impossible to find you. I don't care if you were in X chat under X name, you were impossible to find. Therefore you had to be DQ would and they couldn't come back at us. Be like, well, I'm so mad. I'm like, no, you actually agreed to this. Uh, with this checkbox, you agreed to this. Uh, and they were like, nah, I guess so. All right. You got me. You, you got me this time. Our street fighter. Uh, but it just having something of like maybe during check-in time or, uh, that challenge has, or maybe another option of, do you want a box to, to come up during sign up time of like, here's like a short list of explicit rules that you would like people to follow because there's, I don't know, as a TO, there's certain things that I'm just like, it would be, it would make things so much easier for everybody, the TOs, myself and, and, it, and the other competitors specifically that if people just did X, Y, Z, then 
it would be it would go a lot faster. They would understand what is expected of them, which is kind of another thing that, especially with online tournaments, when there's not someone in the room being like, "All right, everybody, uh, here's what we're gonna do." Instead of that, just having this like little like, "Here's what is expected. Like you can be here. Uh, here's where you need to be. Here's where you need to stand. Here's what you like when you're called upon. Here's what you do." And just like it's those little things that let people know that like they're doing the right thing. Cause if you're like a quiet person and you're in a chat and you don't really know if you're doing the right thing, it's like, I don't want to be awkward. I don't want to make myself look like a fool in front of these people. But like, yep. I, cause people are just there to play. They just want to play and they don't want to look like uh, a dum dum. and it helps people not be dum dums. And that's, that's a good thing. That's uh, exactly right. Yeah. And I think too, that's, that's sort of, it's really in line. You know, we've got a lot of requests recently for, uh, Cons- legal consents for other ones, right? It's a brand put on a tournament or something. There's right. some terms and conditions, <clears throat> similar approach, right? That idea. And I will say that we do have a feature in the works to kind of assist with that. So I'll, I'll make sure you know that you can let nice. your um, crew know once something, once this gets available, but it is underway and, uh, and hopefully it'll be real soon. That's um, awesome. That's good news for me and everybody, because I think that that could be, I mean, like, like you said, for like legal purposes, like super useful uh, to make sure all of that, that you've checked all your boxes. That makes total sense. But like, ah, oh man, that would be super useful. Thank you for that. Yeah. And you know, those, that type of like, Hey, oh, what it does is it safeguards that TO. Hey, I've, I've got the right to do this. Cause you agreed mm-hmm. to this before you even, when you were registering or at some point along that process. So yeah Mm -hmm. um stay tuned (laughs) cool very cool that's where i'll leave that for now (laughs) all right well i think we're kind of coming to um, this is another thing i I could go on about this and talk forever but kind of running in i'd like to keep it to the show to an hour probably an hour and a half is where we're probably going to end up actually (laughs) but is there anything else about discord that or not discord but challenge that you would specifically you got that discord by in your mind i, know I, I do actually i really i'm thinking about how i'm going to implement that and make things so much easier and like the people i need to talk to after this after i'm done recording like <laughs> I'm hopping in another chat and being like hey you guys we could be we could have been doing this for so long we are the yep. dum-dums as it turns out oh no uh <laughs> but is there anything uh, else about challenge that you would kind of want to talk about or any questions you might have no i'd say the um, just to wrap up that last thing, yeah, we're, it's basically a custom field engine, right? So we're building yeah. the opportunity for organizers for any tournament to ask whatever other information you might want, whether that's t-shirt size, sponsor name, who, whatever it be. And one oh, of those shit, cool. fields, one of those fields is a waiver field that could be used to do exactly what you said. Um, you know, confirm you've read the rules if you haven't, and you, you know, you could be DQ'd. So that's coming. Um, other than that, I just like to encourage people to keep playing. I mean, this is a it's a tough time. I think gaming, gaming entertainment, is a good avenue for us all to be part of. And um, if you've got questions about converting, you know, your in person event to online, ask Joe. <laughs> if challenge can be helpful, if you got a question about the what we can do to assist with that, let us know. I mean, just drop us a note on our contact page, uh, and we will get back to you. We got a small team, but you know, we're we're here to help, and we certainly want to extend that as much as we can. I'm just thinking now uh, for that write-in, like if you can allow people to list t-shirt size, would you, is there also an option to like, you know, add your, your Twitch account? Like what is a link to your Twitch account and have them have that be listed. So then we could have like a database of, of Twitch accounts. Yeah. I mean, you could do, you could collect whatever information you wanted to at that point. Fuck yeah. All right. That's good. So, <laughs> so like social security numbers, we just say like, yeah, hey, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'll be <laughs> careful with that stuff, but you know, think, imagine just a form, you know, yeah, you like what's, build. what's your mother's maiden name? What was your first pet's name? Like all that, all that very all important the security, information. Right? The first, your first car, make and model. Yeah. yeah all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Where were you born? Like all that, all that very good stuff. <laughs> that is very useful as an organizer that I it would just be very, you know, it would be easier for me to do my job if I knew your first pet's name. Okay. That's just <laughs> your kindergarten cool. teacher's name. Yeah. yeah your there first is. kindergarten teacher's name. Yeah. All, all that, all that good info, you know, that uh, is very important for a TO. Okay. Very cool. Um, did I cut you off there at the end? Was there anything else? No, you, you didn't. Add? I was just going to say, you know, let's do this again. I think there's a ton we could riff on here and uh, get some more opinions in the room. I would love to do it again. 
Oh, yeah, like, absolutely. I'm Once I implement these features, I'll probably want to get back at you and, and talk about how they work or how they don't work uh, and all that stuff. Because for me, as someone who's running an online tournament, again, this isn't because I'm talking to you. I use Challenge for a reason, and it's because from the user experience, uh, it's easy for the players to find out exactly where they need to be, exactly where, need, where they need to go. Uh, it's it's useful, uh, and thank you for continuing to work on it, apparently, and, and implement these new features. Don't get too feature rich in which it bogs down the system. Don't oh, yeah. don't go don't smash don't smash GG yourself into a corner. Don't <laughs> make the keep the website beautiful, please. Uh, and by beautiful, I mean as ba- basic as fuck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't mean, by the way, when I say basic as fuck, I don't mean that as like a insult. I mean that as like from the kindest way possible of like when I just want this basic information visible, which like we were talking about earlier is so important to running. It's like making sure players know what information they need because in smash GG, whenever you go to the bracket, the rules are at the very bottom of the page. And it's only like one fucking line before it's like, do you want to see more? And that's a click that takes 10 fucking seconds to even see the rules, which is why for the Capcom pro tour, any event, any online event, it took people two fucking years to even see the one rule that there was no training stage allowed, even though that she was in there for two fucking years. Okay. Uh, because no one oh, fucking man. read them. Because it was at the butt. Ah, uh, okay. All right. I'm all right. Done yelling. You I'm gotta sorry. Do your, you got to do your $20 rule. <laughs> at, at some point, trust Just, me. Oh man, at some point that will absolutely happen. Well, again, thank you for your time. That has been yeah. an absolutely it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and I will certainly hit you up again. But before I let you go. Yeah. I I can't let you go without you answering a series of questions which I feel like it kind of can tell can tell a lot about a person. Tell what's going on in the inner machinations of their mind. Uh it comes in two parts. Uh first okay. part is what is your favorite normal attack in any fighting game and why? Oh gosh. Uh you know, my fighting game roots, just to be clear, are like Street Fighter 2 and Killer Instinct um from 94, right? So these that's where I'm coming at you from. And oh, I that's think- fine. I I can rock with that. I fuck with that. You know, I play with that. So, uh, if, I mean, my the, I was maining Blanca throughout that whole time, and I think, um, I mean, as electricity move doesn't count as a normal attack, does it? I'll let you say like, that. That I, okay. I've allowed I've allowed people to answer this question. However, they why the electricity? Um, mostly because now I can just uh, do it to my kids, and I feel like an all star because they have no <laughs> idea. What to do. That, you know, that's it. So as soon as they catch up with me, it's not going to work out very well. Oh, it's the it's the scrub killer. It just he's beat up on your exactly. kids. Be like, ah, that's that's, that's, that's very good, very wholesome. Uh, second part of the question is, what is your favorite yeah. combo in any fighting game, and why? Oh, gosh, yeah. I mean, there used to be this move combo from what was his name and Killer Instinct, Cinder Man mm-hmm. from the from I remember playing this on. Gosh, it was forever ago, but uh, he had this combo that was like, was it Ender or something along those lines that, I mean, you just couldn't get out of. And I remember I couldn't even do it. It was my buddy that did it to me all the time. So it, the only reason it's a favorite is just because it's uh, one that I just always wanted to beat. And so it kept me playing, which was good. Word. All right. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Like, you talk about like Cinder. All right. He, he would just rush you, man. It was just, you couldn't get out of it. It was just, I don't know. That would, again, my roots uh, aren't, as, aren't as current as maybe they should be, but That's at the same fine. time. Let's, that, is, that is the one thing of like, people don't understand that once you start doing and running and organizing is that you play less and less and less sure. games. <laughs> like it is the only time that I get to play fighting games is the, 45 ish minutes before the tournament starts uh, in the pre tournament. That's, that's the only time I'm playing fighting games. Most, most of the time. Oh man. Yeah, Except for when like new games come out, I like to check them out and see, see just to have reference of like what is available. But like, that's really the only like actual, comp- like, 
competition that I that I get is that that like 45 minutes every every Monday. Uh, but all right, good answers. Uh, again, highly appreciative of your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, before you go though, where can people find you or Chalange on the internet? Yeah, check out Chalange. Go there. Um, Twitter slash Chalange. Um, you know, there's. Got a Facebook page too. If people are still using that, otherwise, um, check out the site. Check out these features. The knowledge, new big knowledge base is there too. So we're trying to do more about educating people about what's possible there, and that's that's a good place to go. Awesome. Uh, and again, all of those will be shared in the show notes uh, down below or wherever the fuck show notes show up on whatever you're listening to uh, this podcast on. Uh, again, I'm Joe Monday. You can find me at Super Joe Monday on Twitter.com or at Reddit SF for the our Street Fighter Twitter account or just hop on our Street Fighter anytime. And also, hey, folks, if you're running any kind of tournament on any bracket service, uh, post that to to our Street Fighter. Uh, when I see any of that stuff, I'm always super positive on that stuff and i like to share it as well uh so again also if you're running an online tournament or a tournament in general uh feel free to tag at reddit sf on that and i will gladly signal boost we've been we've been signal boosting any kind of tournament so kind of an aside kind of stick take a step back so during our tournament we also advertise other tournaments and that's like that shit's for free like if locals eat for free, that's free lunch at at nice. the uh the online locals if there if you've got an event going on that you need me to promote uh just forward the information to me um what is most useful for us for anyone listening is like something in a 16 by 9 that can fit full screen uh, and then also in like the tiny little window in the side uh, and just like forward me a little bit of information of like what your event is and, and why it's the, why people should, should go to it. That's basically it. But anyway, folks, that is a show again, one more time, Matt, thank you for joining us, but that will do it for another edition of RSF radio until next time, folks, uh, please take care, please stay indoors and just look out for your health. All right, folks, take care. Peace. Thanks.